What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Unless it's the annual Consumer Electronics Show because we're gonna tell you every scandalous detail. Sorry, Vegas. We covered the show's earliest news on Monday, but the news just kept on coming, led by Samsung, who introduced the world's first transparent micro LED display, which reportedly looks like a futuristic hologram compared to transparent OLED and LCD displays. Those are like VHS now, They're so old. Though unlike LGs, transparent OLED, which is coming out later this year, there's no timeline for when Samsung's see-through super display will find its way into a retail product, making it essentially a demo. Samsung also showed off its new flex in and out flip concept. Still working on the name. Flex in and flip out. What if, it's the obvious. I do a back bend and punch somebody. It's a phone that folds both forward and backwards like an over-enthusiastic yoga instructor. As for ideas that are making the leap from concept to actual product, Samsung is reintroducing its 2020 Bali concept, an adorable little home companion robot that follows users around their house, though Samsung has made a few changes. It now has wheels instead of getting around like the BB-8 ball droid from Star Wars, and it's roughly the size of a bowling ball. Why does it still need to be shaped like a ball if it's... And if you're worried about your little droid getting lonely, you could maybe get Samsung's new bespoke JetBot combo. It's first combination robot vacuum and mop, which detects stains and avoids objects using onboard AI. What back in the day we used to call an algorithm. It's all AI now. Moving on to ASUS, their CES presentation was all about screens, screens, screens. They launched an update to the ZenBook Duo laptop that features a detachable keyboard and two full-sized 14-inch 3K OLED displays grafted together in a stunning display of man's hubris. <laughs> Though notably at a much lower price point than past laptops with a similar form factor. ASUS also announced updates to its ROG Zephyrus G14 and G16, which will have the latest processors and graphics in a thinner, lighter format, as well as a new lineup of monitors, including ASUS's dual mode OLED that can switch between 240 Hz at 4K and 480 Hz at 1080p. In case you don't necessarily want a laptop with two big screens full time, they've also got a 17 inch portable OLED monitor, the Zen Screen Fold, which comes with a built-in stand and can be used either vertically or horizontally. But for the Marie Kondos of the gaming world, Asus unveiled a fair number of cable-free components, specifically the upcoming RTX 4000 Super Series graphics cards and Z790 motherboards. But they weren't done yet. The company premiered its own version of the NUC, the first one since Intel nuked the NUC last year, as well as the thinner, lighter, and hardier ROG Phone 8, the 8 Pro, and the 8 Pro Edition. The brand new Asus Zen Wi-Fi mesh network systems are using cutting edge Wi-Fi 7 technology. And finally, Asus debuted its new AirVision M1 smart glasses, which are designed to help users efficiently multitask. You can both wear a poor man's Apple Vision Pro and look like a huge dork. <laughs> Next up, we finally saw some real wacky products from the tech industry's resident goofster, Lenovo. Have you seen their videos? They're hilarious. I'm a big fan. True to form, Lenovo unveiled the ThinkBook Plus Gen 5 Hybrid, a detachable two-in-one laptop that runs both Windows and Android simultaneously. <laughs> Lenovo, you kill me. This thing is essentially a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 powered Android tablet paired with a keyboard dock that's also a full Intel Core Ultra 7 powered Windows PC. When docked, you can switch OS's with a button or stream one OS to the other if you want to prove to your friends that Lenovo is the funniest laptop maker. They already believe you though. To support your point, you could also show them the company's mechanical energy harvesting combo a keyboard and mouse that will both work for around half an hour if you spin the keyboard's dial or turn the literal crank on the bottom of the mouse for a few minutes. It's just a proof of concept, which is like the tech industry version of a human saying, it's just a joke, after realizing what they just said sounded kind of unhinged. Wow, can't wait to use these peripherals with a PC that requires far more power to run. Speaking of power, Lenovo also kept the external graphics enclosure dream alive with the ThinkBook graphics extension, which will only work with ThinkBook laptops thanks to its proprietary connector based on the Oculink protocol. Why? 
because it's one and a half times faster than Thunderbolt 4, and it's weird, that's CES, baby! <laughs> Speaking of laptops, Lenovo updated their whole lineup, including the Legion 7i, ThinkBook 13X Gen 4, ThinkBook 16P Gen 5, and even the ThinkBook 14 Gen 6 Plus i. Lenovo, we do think you're funny, okay? But that's trying a bit too hard. <laughs> Stop doing a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Just be yourself. Lenovo also announced Avatar Master, an app apparently designed to make you a VTuber avatar, so when your gaming is interrupted by a Zoom call for work, your boss won't see the Cheeto dust all over your face. Finally, an app for, th for that. Now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by Seasonic, the tech industry's resident based and performance-pilled PC parts manufacturer. You may know about Seasonic because we told you about their power supplies being absolute S tier. But just when you thought Seasonic couldn't get any Seasoniker, they branched out into the fan game. Their Magflow fans have snappy magnetic connections to the power cable and each other, meaning they can be daisy chained to reduce cabling and make installation super simple. So go on, check them out at the link below. It's the right thing to do. Have you ever seen Quick Bits rise into the air on a moonlit night? No? Good, they don't do that. I was testing you. Well done. Razer kinda disappointed me this year. Instead of an overpriced gas mask or a triple screened laptop, the wackiest thing they introduced was Project Esther, the world's first HD haptics gaming cushion, two years after they launched a haptic gaming chair. But I guess now you can experience explosions, heartbeats, and even footsteps on the chair you can afford. Now, your enemy's position can be given away by the clap of your ass cheeks. <laughs> My magnum opus! <laughs> <laughs> also, apparently they updated the Razer Blade 14 and 16 with AI or whatever, but all I can think about is how Razer envisions a future where your reaction time in Valorant is determined by the shake of your cake. That should give you some ideas for next year, Razer. You're welcome. Intel's CES keynote was a half hour snooze fest interview with CEO Pat the Smolder Gelsinger, where he talked generically about how AI is cool and can be a force of good. Which isn't to say that Intel has nothing interesting coming out next year. Their new hyper-efficient Arrow Lake and Lunar Lake processors are coming out for desktop and laptop platforms and should triple AI performance compared to their Meteor Lake predecessors. Intel has also changed their mind and will be bringing support for their performance boosting application optimizer feature to 12th and 13th gen CPUs as well as 14th gen. And Intel announced it will be creating AI enhanced SOCs designed specifically for auto. The new chips will first be installed in EV cars from Zeker, which is either an automotive brand or an offshoot of Grindr exclusively for dudes named Zeke. Google's CES updates were somewhat modest, as is tradition. The Chrome browser and a number of other apps are coming to some vehicles with Android Automotive, starting with certain Volvo and Polestar models, while EV owners with Android Automotive will be able to share battery info with Google Maps so they can find out if they'll make it to grandma's house in one charge. Google also took their relationship with Samsung to the next level by merging Android's nearby share and Samsung's quick share feature into one. It massively expands the ability to share content between Android devices. If you don't know how nearby share or quick share work, good news, you can Google it on your Volvo. In non-CES news, OpenAI released a public response to the New York Times, saying that their copyright lawsuit against OpenAI and Microsoft is without merit, but adding that they'd still like to partner with the outlet in the future. My ex is a liar, but I'd still like to get back together. <laughs> so you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> OpenAI says that the newspaper had to manipulate prompts in order to get JetGPT to spit out verbatim sections of content it was trained on, which is otherwise a rare bug. OpenAI has also recently expressed that it would be impossible to train helpful AI models without using some amount of copyrighted material, simply because copyright today covers virtually every sort of human expression, and most public domain material is at least a century old. I, however, would absolutely love to see an LLM that talks like Queen Victoria and has no idea what germ theory is. <laughs> And Twitch is laying off over 500 employees, around 35% of its total estimated staff, in addition to the 400 employees cut in March 2023, which comes out to a loss of around half of their total staff in less than a year. CEO Dan Clancy described the layoffs as an attempt to 
right size the company, which despite cost cutting and sustainability efforts, is still much bigger than it needs to be given the size of their business. For the unfamiliar, right sizing is a lot like downsizing because it is downsizing. They just don't use that word. <laughs> and the word I want to use is please. As in, please come back on Friday for some more tech news because we're gonna talk about the weird stuff at CES and that's gonna, be, that's, it's gonna get wacky in here, okay? Yeah. 